Good evening, everyone. It's Necro Thursday, and of course, that means it's time for this week's episode yeah, of it, the Necromaniacs man. Horror Podcast. How's it going, Mike? It is going well. And you are right. It is Necro Thursday, and it is time for the Necromaniacs Horror Podcast, yeah, yeah. the greatest well, as horror we podcast this, in America. We're on the brink uh, of I am really, well. Uh, it is uh, 1,000 degrees on, in this man. early September yeah, uh, heat wave the, we're having here in New York Atlantic and New Jersey, weekend uh, but I believe today, Thursday, is the, the last day for this, so uh, tomorrow it's, it's going to down to like 80, it's thank God. Cool. Yeah, it, it's been oppressive, man. Yeah, even uh, a summer lover like myself uh, thinks it's time for the temperatures to not be 95 degrees, yes. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, as we record this, we're on the brink of a really... Uh, important weekend that's coming up man mm, yes we are yeah it's the uh atlantic city weekend to see danzig perform live and that's yeah I'm looking forward to this for a long time it's going to be cool yeah, yeah me too uh, uh got got my tickets know, as a as a birthday that, gift from our buddy hank uh, my bassist in inhuman and uh yeah stella and i are going to ac tomorrow it's funny i, I danzig yeah, you know, proper something. Danzig solo so, uh, hasn't, hasn't yeah, played this, uh, the area in a minute and weekend. trying to so think what when it was that he did. I mean, tomorrow, I know I was there, Friday, um, but he also hasn't done a tour where he Ocean's skips Resort, New York in a so while, too. Time. He's skipping New York. Like the closest one is the uh, Jersey show. Yeah, there's something, uh, you know, poignant about that, I feel. Yes, yes. You know, I, I've, it's funny. I've seen The Misfits three times I like Behemoth, in the time uh, I have the not Satanist. seen Danzig. So that's, I think there's, uh, there's like that. a couple of really, <laughs> really there. solid records. So, uh, yeah, yeah, this out, uh, this is my girlfriend's mind. birthday weekend. They lose the so wear recently. going down you know, I'm tomorrow. Looking, but I'm still looking, they always Friday. look great live, though. I'm <laughs> staying two nights at the Ocean's Resort. Yeah. So it's going to be a good time. Yeah, that's, it's going to be a blast. A bunch of other people, you know, are going to be there. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not a huge Behemoth fan. Stella likes them yeah, more than I do, but I don't. I don't dislike weird. Behemoth. I like Behemoth uh, up to the Satanist. I think hmm. there's like a couple of really, really solid records that that band put out, but I'm. Uh, they lose me though recently. You know, I'm look, but I'm still. Look, they always are great live though. That's the thing. Yeah, they are. The, uh, last yeah. time we saw them was with with Napalm Death. Uh, a Terminal Five a few years ago. I, um, and that, that was cool. I mean, I'm, they put on a good show. At this point, I'm neutral. Um, but yeah, I think new behemoth just them. bores and, me uh, to death. Yeah, that's yeah, what it kinda, is. She's it's kind just of boring, that, that kind meandering. Of line, you know, I mean, um, spooky. And the earlier stuff has some of those real kind, kind of, of you know banger, catchy riffs. And of course, there's Midnight, who who I love. They're always great. Um, Twin Temple, not not a fan. But we're gonna see how uh, how I. Well, yeah, that, how they what, fare in the live do. setting. We'll see. I'm not into. I um, I'm at this point I'm neutral, but mm -hmm. my, my girlfriend loves them, and uh, yeah, that, that's kind of she's kind of into that that kind of vibe. Yep. You know what I mean? This kind of yeah. sp spooky, like you know, yes. doo wop kind of th thing. You know? Oh yeah. To me, there's just something so corny and contrived about it, but. They are they are quite popular, and, and I will new, give uh, them the a fair shot recently. in the live setting, Michael. Well, yeah, that, that's what that's what you got to do. You know, you got to do it. You got to do it. But yeah, it's been it's been a pretty, you know, big September actually, or it's going to be. Uh, there's a, a new dying fetus coming out. There's yep. a new pro fanatica coming out. Yes. There's a new Cannibal Corpse coming out, oh, dude. And there was most recently uh, the other week the new Incantation, and, uh, and this is all night, in the span of the last. Uh, we had band you know, it's going to be in the span and, of like four uh, weeks. And so the, new, uh, the new Martyr like drop maybe a forty yes, minute drive. Yes, from I'm literally Keyport looking at it right now. Um, Elizabeth, where, uh, I, 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 I'm getting CDs lately because I did. I listened to the Martyr record. And, and I'm looking at the new Marduk right now and the new minutes. Dying Fetus, I was, and I, I pre-ordered the like Cannibal. I'm like listening to the record, uh, and, I'm like and the Pro Fanatica. The, uh, the new Marduk look at the, might the, the be the album of the year for me. Like, like, dude, 90 that? miles an hour. I've been running it. It just stopped. I was so psyched and, uh, last stoked night, to listen to uh, it. We had band practice, and mm -hmm. um, it's like uh, like a maybe a 40-minute drive from Keyport where we practiced to Elizabeth. 
where uh, mm-hmm. my girlfriend lives. And I did, I listened to the Marduk record and I did that drive in 32 minutes. I was, mm. <laughs> I'm like listening to the record and I'm oh, like yeah. speeding up the Garden State Parkway and I look at the od- the speedometer oh, and so I'm doing like my, 90 miles an hour. I'm like, it just, I was so <laughs> psyched and stoked to listen to it, man. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Mortis, the singer, wrote the lion's share of this well, record, well, having, which is, uh, which is Daniel interesting. Wright, uh, usually, like a lot uh, of the Morgan, material, I think, the guitarist was like writes most of the music. Of, uh, um, Venom but, into of the course, you know, of Marty, uh, Mortis, you know, similar, Daniel has similar to the way when Rutan joined also, Cannibal. You know, you bangers. Know, it's like Rutan, I uh, feel uh, like, is... And this record kind of, of those guys is very funeral misty, but not so much so that it's overtaking any of the Marduk if that makes sense, right? It's kind of, it, it's got a very healthy amount of funeral misty vibes, but it's still Marduk, you know? Well, well, having uh, yeah. Daniel write, like a lot of the material, I think was like an injection of uh, venom into the veins mm. of Marduk. You know, it's similar, <laughs> yeah. similar to the way when Rutan joined Cannibal, you know, it's like Rutan, I feel like is kind of put those guys on steroids or something, you know? Totally. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, and look, I, I not that Marduk needed an injection really because I actually loved me. Victoria, you know? I thought that was like this very kind of like quick burst of just like anger, you know? Yeah. So all those songs were kind of shorter and the record was a little, little shorter. Uh, this one, I think, is a, li- a bit more intricate, you know? But it's got these weird moments, like the, the weird funeral mist moments, but they, they work really well here. And yeah, man, one of the greatest black metal bands of all time, without totally. question. Mark. Absolutely, and I, yeah, it's I our first show in sixteen myself. years. Those I mean, uh, yeah. really sink, sink in with you. it feels like it, man. Yeah, it's like twenty twenty two. We started off strong. That's, that's and then the, the, the there was musical a mishaps, uh, state of address. But at the end of the year, uh, two things to promote: number one, has plagued us uh, my band Confusion. We're playing the September thirtieth, first show in sixteen years. Uh, at the Brooklyn Monarch with Killing now. Time so and uh, Terror a short run and a whole host of other bands. Uh, all out Should work. be a lot of fun. Uh, Mike, and uh, Mike Mr. Hill had some back. tune shows to announce. Yeah, it's our first yeah, show in 16 uh, years. I mean, uh, York City, <laughs> so it's like uh, <laughs> it feels like it, man. It's like uh, 2022. We were we run. started off strong, we, um, and then it started a couple on, of uh, mishaps. October 13th, scheduling mm. Phoenixville the year, and it, which is outside of Philly, has plagued us Polish into club, 2023. So DIY the only mm. show we played to date is at the 14th of October thing. in Brooklyn. Mm. Now we finally got some stuff to announce. That I've only been doing a short run. I know you guys just played All Out War. Uh, yep. Mike, I know you and Mike score go way back. Yeah, and then yeah. we shoot up to uh, along with uh, Providence, Beach, Rhode Island, the uh, so home it's like of HP uh, Lovecraft, Tri-State area, uh, October fifteenth, uh, day return run to through, the um, club called Dusk, starting on uh, which is October thirteenth really in Phoenixville, PA, which is outside mm-hmm. of Philly at uh, the Polish Club. So a DIY style show. Nice. The 14th of October. And then on the 29th, in Brooklyn it's at like Gold a, Sound, a Halloween a venue show that I've only at, been to. Uh, Amityville once. Music. And I know you guys just played there. Island. Yeah, with, um, it's a great place, man. Our buddies just Restless played there for my, uh, my birthday. The yeah. Record release show. We shoot up to uh, after Providence, Rhode Island. A record the, uh, in which I contribute on, uh, to uh, some vocals on that to record. return to the club called Dusk. Which is a spot. Yeah, that it's I exclusive, really man. Playing. It's uh Yeah, I heard that's I a great club. Not, they always know, have cool death metal and black metal right? shows there. Yeah, so I, I imagine but, uh, that's a nice No, nah, the spot show's play. announced. Um, and then on the 29th, so it's like out a, there in the sort world. Of a Halloween so that's all, show. That's all that's all going playing on at uh, the Amityville Music Hall out on Long Island with hmm. um our buddies Restless Spirit. It's the record release show for their new album after this will be Toombs' first nice. record in, in which i in our entire contribute career. some uh, some vocals on that record oh yes. very oh, nice i did not is that is that ever. exclusive i didn't know that yeah it's oh wait no no oh, oh, oh. Uh, cool. i'm totally I lying I not, we played yeah, long yeah, island with you and black and Amble, stuff, remember right? that? <laughs> Yeah, it's, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, nah, the shows are now. I'm so full um, of shit, man. <laughs> but yeah, so it's out there in the world. So that's all. That's all going was, on in the month of it, October. It was yeah. It was that's like a our, cool like, club uh, too. Played there know, like many times or something uh, like with that. the last band and Inhuman. So yeah, man, enjoy. This will be Toombs' first Long Island appearance in our entire career. No, really? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, we never played Long that was Island. Great, ever. great show. 
great show. Wow. Actually, oh wait, no, no, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. ten years. I'm totally uh, lying. We played Long Island Crucible. with you and Black Anvil. Milestones. That? I'm not gonna. Talk yes. To you on this. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's over 10 I'm years so ago. full that of shit, was, man. <laughs> that was that was ten years ago. I mean, that, or maybe yeah. eleven years ago. It was yeah. It was like our like uh, I don't know like ninth show or something like that maybe. It was, oh, yeah. man. Well, I I could find out the date, listeners. I don't want to bore everybody with you know digging through, but that was over ten years ago, it's and it, it was a great show. Room. I have yeah. pictures from. It. Yes, no, nice. it was great, great show, great show. Actually, <laughs> dude, it has to be over ten years. Uh, yeah, for personal milestones that I'm not going to go into on this, but yeah, it had yeah, to be over yeah. ten years ago, definitely. Um. I know, like, <laughs> yeah, the date escapes. I'm usually extremely good with dates, but it was Mr. Beery's, and uh, it was a good time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Long Island. Long That's Island's right. great. We got off a lot of hardcore week. people, a lot of metal people. Brandon good people. Legion's the home of Ron Wolf Grimaldi. 666. Yes, Ron Grimaldi is He's there. also a hard I mean, podcast, you know. except that he uh, is... The, 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 the birth of the crumb suckers one of the, the greatest actors, uh, crossover bands ever yeah. and occasionally but uh, uh hopefully you've enjoyed the musical portion of necromaniacs <laughs> because this is what happens when you get two musicians on a horror podcast uh but with that out of the way it's time for the plugs right mike that's right we kick off the week with brandon legion's horror wolf 666 He's also a horror podcast, except that he is focused on interviewing filmmakers, actors, anyone involved in the horror scene. And occasionally, one of us uh, shows up on his show. That's right. We, one of us pops up. Uh, on Tuesday, we have the greatest metal podcast in the land, Into the Necrosphere, hosted by Jackie Smith. I am in the midst of the uh, nice long interview with the Incantation Actually, Fellows, this, Michael. I'm enjoying this past it. Week's episode with John. Uh, Magic, good new episode uh, author, uh, with uh, publisher, Incantation. Narrator, uh, that comes to you every Tuesday actually. into the Necrosphere. You better listen to that podcast. Uh, coming to you every Wednesday. It is Mr. Hill's own Everything Went Black podcast, a potpourri of uh, ideas and different topics and subjects it could be a musician it could be a you know someone in in mma it could be uh, it could be anyone but Actually, uh, this, yeah. uh, this past week's episode with john paget uh the author and publisher narrator hmm. and ventriloquist actually ventriloquist i mean he, there you go i mean how many podcasts do that uh yes coming to you every wednesday mr hills everything went black on thursday you're listening to it right now. It's the Necromaniacs podcast, the greatest horror podcast in North America. Uh, coming to you on Friday, we have none other than the artist <laughs> formerly known as Break the Apocalypse, now known as Spitball Media with Mr. John Draper, who happens to be my flesh and blood. John Draper is coming to the confusion show. How about that? Manifestation. He's, uh, he's crashing uh, for the weekend for the uh, the hardcore fest, so that should be fun. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah on Saturday, you can chill. You can uh, enjoy what hopefully is the fall weather by the time you hear this and relax. Uh, but on Sunday, Soul well, Knox, let's do our Carl Hikara's podcast, another one that you should yeah. be hitting yep. the subscribe <laughs> button on. Yeah, but man. wait, folks, um, there's more. So there is another horseman to the apocalypse, message, right? You Mr. can Hill? hit us on Iblis the Manifestation 90 by Cheyenne of Tribax. Yes. That's a bit of a mouthful. If you can yes. Yes. recommend uh, movie but yeah. to us. Or just, welcome uh, aboard, sir. You know, just, welcome just to the family. Us, uh, a line about um, pretty much anything. Tonight, week, we, we have, have spent um, a lot of time in the 1970s listeners. Well, let's do our voicemail first. Oh, I always, how do I always forget the yeah. fucking voicemail? <laughs> we have a voicemail to play. Yeah, man. Um, so if you want to leave us a voice message, you can hit us on the Necro phone at 908-913-0782. And if you can recommend a movie to us or just, uh, you know, just, just drop us a, a line about pretty much anything. And this week we have um, a regular caller. Mike from Pennsylvania. Mm. Hey, Necro Hoods. It's Mike from Telford here. It's uh, Friday night. It's about 11 o'clock. I'm up here in 
upstate New York in my family's garage on my grandparents' property here. Having a beer and a cigar, listening to some Nurse of Wound. Just wanted to touch base with you guys. And, but, you know, I really enjoyed the uh, Let's Scare Jessica to Death episode. I can't take any credit for that. Mike Scandato brought that up. I just uh, seconded that emotion. Uh, so thanks for that one. That's a great movie. That's a, that's a favorite. I'm glad you guys dug it. And I uh, hope you have a good holiday weekend. I uh, haven't really watched much. Uh, I had a weekend alone, but I didn't do shit. And uh, I did watch Night Tide. That's a Curtis Harrington movie. He's a Salamite. Uh, Mike, have you seen Night Tide? Dennis Hopper's, and I think that might be Dennis Hopper's first movie. It was it was cool. It had a really cool uh, Carnival of Souls type of atmosphere. And uh, it's a great. There's a woman one, in that who's um, married to Jack Black and Parsons White. It's got Dennis Hopper in it. Uh, and, I haven't uh, seen I it you guys have ever seen in a that. while. It's, it's worth I believe it's, it was uh, on Shutter for a minute. That's what I would say. And, um, it's kind of creepy. And, uh, you should definitely spooky. watch it, man, because uh, it has like this kind of spots, uh, Carnival of Souls vibe. But, uh, like hope you guys are doing Mike good. Mentioned. Look forward and, to this um, coming Thursday. And, uh, it also, I, I want to think guys. it takes place in Coney okay, Island, actually. Mike, have you seen Night Tide? No. Yeah. I'm familiar with that title, but I've never seen it. It's a great one, man. It's uh, mm. black and white. It's got Dennis Hopper in it. Uh, I haven't seen it in a while. I believe it was mm. on Shutter for a minute. And um, mm -hmm. you should definitely watch it. Coney Island it has like, like this kind of uh, Carnival of Souls like vibe, this, like Mike, Mike, Mike mentioned. Okay. And, um, it also, I, I want to think it takes place in Coney Island, actually. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Got to see that then. Got to yeah. see it. Well, uh, let's be honest, folks. Not a lot of movies take place in, 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 in Brooklyn, in my opinion. Not really. Uh, not a lot of horror movies. And certainly not a lot of horror, horror movies or movies take place in South Brooklyn, right? I mean, you know, uh, we need more. So, yeah, I would like to check this out. Coney Island is like the perfect setting for uh, stuff like this, I think. Yeah, I got you know, to check that out. A while out. back, I, I was reading. I've actually. Um, you know that series of books called Brooklyn Noir? I know the series, Brooklyn I just Noir. haven't yeah. actually read any of the books. Uh, I can't remember what volume of it was because I believe there's a couple. I read a cool story that was taking place in Coney Island and it had this somewhat horror bend to it. Uh, some are older, some are new. And uh, it's now kind of making me have like a mental note to like, you know, grab all of those fuckers and, and read all of them. <laughs> yeah, I got I should check that out. I should check out more of those. I've actually yeah. um, I know the series. I just haven't actually read any of the books, believe it or not. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's cool right. Covers and um, actually colors in them. And yeah, Mike, Mike, cool stuff. Mike from Pen Pencil, um, Pennsylvania. I think it's uh, Akashic Books, uh, the New York-based uh, company puts them out. I'm going to credit Good him stuff. with um, uh, us covering yeah, this uh, movie. We, uh, oh, and, uh, you just want to say, kind of talking uh, about it, but I'm listeners, give you if you, you want to call in, and you should, when you leave us recommendations, we uh, our ears perk up, you know? And quite honestly, we may cover a movie that you ask us to cover, right, Mike? That's right, and... um. Actually, oh, wow. Mike, Mike, Mike from Pennsyl Pennsylvania, actually, he may mm -hmm. beg to differ, but I'm going to credit <laughs> him with uh, us covering this um, movie because he brought it up and uh, you yeah, and I have been kind of talking about it, but I'm going to give him credit for this. Absolutely. Uh, it's funny. It's a movie that had been sitting in my pile for a long time. Uh, but, but I did not get around to watching it. What a surprise. Uh, DVD. It was a sealed DVD in my collection, Mr. Hill. Oh, wow. Uh, so I think I've had it for a minute. And that movie is called Lamora, A Child's Tale of the Supernatural from 1973. Uh, Synapse, good old Synapse, put out the DVD back in 2004. Uh, but as of That's now, it's not there is any no Blu-ray. It is only a DVD-only release. And, I looked for and then back in 2020, they said that they YouTube, have no plans at all to put it out on Blu-ray, despite having a 4K scan of the film sitting in their, uh, you know, files, so to speak. So uh, if you want to own the movie, you can. Uh, I've seen it on eBay for very reasonable prices. Yeah, I mean, uh, you it's can the same... It. 
time uh, because frame, unfortunately as, uh, the only Messiah other place to see it as like Mr. All Hitler those great films is on YouTube, and, uh, right, Mike? It fits, uh, That's correct. Nicely. It's very, not on very, any uh, of the streaming nihilistic that I've in a lot of ways. And I looked for, um, for it everywhere. Very dark. So I had to go to yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Creepy Luckily, vibe it's there. this whole movie in a different yes. way than some and of the others. Which glad we were able to, to, you know, suss this one out because it is another really cool addition to our ongoing yeah, summer of I the American nightmare. I think I in, um, Yeah, text, I mean, it's the same but, uh, time frame you know, I'm a big as fan uh, Messiah of Robert Evil Young, and like not all just those great Conan films. Stuff. And um, but all yeah. of his uh, uh, hard, nice though, characters. Like very, very, uh, and the vampires in a lot of ways. This movie. Um, yes. Remind me somewhat like a creepy vibe of the vampires in a different way from some of the others, which we'll get into. And it's a yeah. vampire film where, once again, the vampires are a little, little different, huh? Yeah, and I think I mentioned this to you in um, the text, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Robert E. Howard, not just the Conan yeah. stuff, but also mm -hmm. his uh, horror ca characters that he has. And the vampires in this movie remind me somewhat of the vampires that are in some of the you know, Solomon Kane stories. Interesting. Yeah. Um, now, uh, you know, to get a yeah, little bit ahead of ourselves, there, there are kind of two idea. vampires, no, that's two what types I mean. of vampires in this like movie. Kind of Robert e. Howard, uh, one are stories, the more traditional so looking ones, you could say. Like that, you know? uh, w mainly being the, 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 the title of the film is Lamora, and Lamora is the more traditional female vampire, very pale and pretty and vampiric looking. And then there's a whole other subsect of vampire in this movie that is very kind of like savage looking, uh, almost yeah. werewolfy looking. So it was uh, written right, and directed Mike? by. Yeah, Richard they should do Blackburn. more with that idea. Well, so you know, that's what I mean. Part. It reminds me of like these the movies, kind of Howard, 80 minutes horror long stories. So on the short a lot of times you'll find situations like that, you know? Mm. Yeah, like, you know, the ones like Lamora are kind of like humanish, human looking, you know? But then the others are more kind of mutated, feral, monstrous, you know. Again, I, I almost got like werewolf vibes, but they're not werewolves. They're, they're vampires. So I, I thought that was actually a pretty cool idea. Yeah. You know? So it was uh, mm -hmm. written and directed by Richard Blackburn, who also mm -hmm. has a part in the movie. The movie is 80 minutes long on the short side, I think. Yes. Uh, released April 30th, 1973 in California uh limited release yeah, and then it like got Tom like a full Talents. release later in the year december 18th 1974 yeah, who, uh who wikipedia credits two played, different uh, years Otis uh running down that cast we have the you know the, the director and writer well richard blackburn as, as the reverend in, um, uh cheryl as smith Man. as lila lee uh william witten as alvin lee uh, some smaller roles, Steve Johnson as the ticket man, High Pike as the bus driver, who Mr. Hill pointed out before we got rolling, bears a resemblance to someone, huh? Yeah, it looks like Tom Towles. <laughs> yes, he, yes, he does look like Tom Towles. Yeah, yes. who, you know, obviously he played uh, Otis in uh, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, as well mm -hmm. as a small role in um, God's Lonely Man. Yes, another uh, yeah. This is uh, fucked up one that we covered this year. Almost like was, uh, like an art. Probably one of my like my that. movies uh, of the year that wasn't of the year. Like very low budget. Um, sort of have, uh, Leslie Kaplan of, uh, build in this film as Leslie Glib as Lamora uh, of the title, uh, Maxine Ballantyne as the witch Solange, and Parker West plays a young man. And not a huge cast in this movie. Uh, definitely more low budget. Then Messiah of Evil and Let's Scare Jessica to Death, though, huh? Yeah, this is uh, almost like a, like an art film or something like that. You know what I mean? It has yeah. like a very low budget, sort of along the lines of um, children shouldn't play with dead things. But it also lent, lent yes, this that's what it of, reminds um, me of. I couldn't like think. I was like quality. Uh, you know? For some reason, I, I, the name I mean, was escaping me, and I'm like, "Yeah, it, it's you can probably go, like potentially one or two ways cost even less to make than that." Movie and be like, All right, uh, as you'll notice, if you're watching the movie, listeners, or, like 
when they're in the town some, and they have these signs that like literally just look like someone took a black marker and put it on some, some cardboard. Like, did you notice that about bus stop and, and things like I that? And like, it just seemed very, uh, very inexpensive. No, but it also lent lent it this sense of um, like a dreamlike quality. You know, mm. I mean, interesting. Yeah, no, it did. Yeah, you, I, you I, can yeah. go like one or two ways with it. You can look at the movie and be like, all right, it's a cheapo film. No, no money. Or in some in some cases, like when you see dreams being portrayed, you know, there'll there'll be some bizarre things like that in the dream. And that's that's how I chose to run with it. OK. Yeah. All right. I could see that. Definitely has some dreamy qualities for, for a low budget movie. Definitely. Uh, a little bit a little bit more from of the backstory. Sorry. Uh, it was conceived by Blackburn, uh, a former University of California film student. Definitely has some film student vibes to it. Uh, it was shot on location in Pomona, California and the surrounding areas. Uh, it had a premiere at Scripps College in April of 73. And it was actually then sold to Media oh, Cinema Group, uh, who but the uh, went on to cut the movie by 40 minutes and release it theatrically in 1974. Not a uh, but I believe the version me and Mr. Hill saw was the uncut like, uh, version. Uh, Synapse you know, uh, advertised you know. it as the full uncut version. And uh, if it was 80 minutes or so uh, on YouTube, then, we, you know, you and I both yeah. saw the, the real deal. Uh, the film was, of course, heavily criticized by yeah, the no, Catholic Legion of Decency, yeah. who deemed the film as anti-Catholic, which, nope. well, oh, I could no. see. No, Mr. Nope. Hill? Oh, definitely. Uh, but the one thing to keep in mind is that the Reverend is not a Catholic priest. He's some sort of Protestant, like, uh, you know, clergy, yeah. you know? Um, which might have gone over the heads of the Catholic people, the Catholic League, a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, because ultimately, I think you're right. Uh, yeah. No, he's not a priest. It's he's a, a reverend. It's a yeah. reverend, and no one is called reverend in the Catholic faith, number nope. one. Not Hell really. No. Uh, it's more of a Protestant thing. I, I would um, say that in but, addition yeah, to being I, I, anti I don't know. I, I, I could see it's, uh, religious also people shining a day, light. In the 70s, the obviously having a problem with it. Uh, everyone in the movie is is lecherous and uh, unfortunately trying oh, yeah. to, you know, have relations with a 13, 14 year old girl. Uh, listeners, uh, thankfully, uh, actress Cheryl Smith was 18 at the time of filming, but uh, she was playing a, a much younger uh, aged role. Huh? I, I would say that in addition to it being anti-religion, it's uh, also shining a light onto just the, the treachery and lecherousness of men. Yes, and child abuse and oh, yeah. the abuse. Uh, you know, a, a well, young girl. Every male character in this movie go through. Is basically uh, trying this to, is uh, during the prohibition era. Violent. It does not you take know, place in 1973, from the beginning. You know, there's uh, also uh, it takes place. They kind of during like the, the, the 30s or whatever uh, i forget when prohibition too, was you know? uh late 20s early 30s um which i could imagine w was probably not the best time for women period right um but yeah it does kind of shine a light on just like you know abuse in a way right yeah i mean well every know, male and, character in this mind, movie that... uh, was Lila basically was trying to uh sexually assault lila it's so, definitely you know pretty yeah. much appropriate from the beginning, yes. you know, and there's also um, they kind of like hint that her dad uh, touched her too, you know. Yeah, it's wild, and and then uh, Lamora herself, uh, who who you think is you know semi decent for a vampire, no, she's she's uh, she kind of yeah. makes a little bit of the moves on on uh, Lila as well, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, and and let's keep yeah. in mind and, that. That, uh, that's uh, exactly how I would old. see it too. Because so mm. there is the sense of like, you know, oh yeah, you know, like totally, almost like totally. a little red riding um, hood, which kind of makes you wonder where, um, what exactly you know, Lila Blackburn was going for here. World, uh, looking for look, father, ultimately, it's you know, it's like a criminal. it's almost got like a dark and um, grim fairy tale so, vibe at, to it. In this, no, like yeah. it's got like a dark, Very, dreamy. Fairy the tale vibe to it, with a very, very dark where these, um, undertone. Vampires live. Yeah, you know? is that and where? 
that that's a exactly it's almost like that town see it too because it, there is the sense it, it of almost like, has like the vibe of like you know like almost like a little red like a riding, riding hood story. kind of thing where um you know lila is out into in the in the great big world yeah for her father. Like, there's a scene you know, where she takes like a, a criminal you know you know and and it's right. all, it reminds and, me of um, that scene in the in ends um, up at or this, shadow over Innsmouth, rather very they take a bus out to the town of Astaroth, where Innsmouth, which is, is where these um, vampires live, you know, because he's on this and that bus trip, it's almost that like that creepy, town. Man. That's where we the Tom Towel. It, it um, almost has like, like the guy. vibe of like Dunwich even even he's like from, threatening. Like, yeah, to, uh, definitely, too, definitely, you know? definitely soft HP Lovecraft vibes, or maybe even not that soft going on here. Yeah, yeah, because like there's a scene where she takes a bus. You know, and and it's all, it reminds me of that scene in the in um, or Shadow over Innsmouth rather, where they take a bus out to this peninsula where Innsmouth is located, and because he's on this and that bus trip that was creepy, man. That's where we the Tom Towels uh, lookalike guy, even mm. even he's like threatening to uh, Lila too, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, like that's, that's something that I <laughs> as you're watching it, listeners, back. just when you think like maybe on, like, one dude is going to be okay, like that, the that doesn't really happen. Uh, everyone's not okay uh, to this girl, and it kind of sucks. Yep. Um, now, uh, interestingly enough, uh, director Richard Blackburn was inspired mainly by the 1970 film Count Yorga Vampire, which is another California set vampire film from the early 70s. And an excellent film. You view, uh, you fuck with the Count Yorga oh, Vampire? Yeah. That, that's, that's something that I watched way back. It was probably mm -hmm. on like Chiller Theater or something like that back in the day. Yeah. Uh, we should uh, think about covering that. It even has a, a pretty cool sequel. Uh, so yeah. I, I like that movie. Uh, it's Now, this movie is not as slick as that, obviously, and not as produced and not as well acted as that. But I, I could see how... Uh, you know, Blackburn was inspired by it for sure. Yeah, but uh, he definitely takes some chances here and puts his like own stamp on things. And, and which is, uh, well, let's say, you know, you know pushes the envelope with the overall and, plot. I mean, even the guy who sells the ticket in this to get movie, on the bus. Um, it's not I mean, he's cutter. literally and I, There's a even a chance some listeners little girl. will potentially you know, and, earn this movie you know off after like a half hour. And look, it's not that graphic. Right? Yeah, it's not a graphic in, you know, film, she but it's a stuff. lot of uncomfortable uh, moments, right? Yeah, it's heavy on atmosphere, and there's a lot of, like, rapiness in it, which is, uh, you know, hmm. child abuse stuff, stuff. And, I mean, even the guy who sells her the ticket to get on the bus. Yes. I mean, he's literally offering a candy to a little girl. Hmm. You know, and, and you know that stuff was, like, laced with goofballs or something you know what i mean like yeah she was god gonna, knows what yeah who knows what was in it you know luckily she sidesteps that yeah but uh i have to say uh cheryl smith did a, did a wonderful job in this movie and uh doing my my necromaniacs research um she uh actually went by uh another name later on in her career as a uh, rainbow smith uh, she starred in a whole host of exploitation and horror films after this, uh, including uh, Caged Heat in 1974, uh, The Swinging Cheerleaders in 1974, Phantom of the Paradise uh, from also 1974, Busy Year, Pom Com Girls, Revenge of the Cheerleaders, Massacre at Central High, which is a movie I've always wanted to see. I've never actually seen that movie from uh, 1976. Uh, she had small roles in Logan's Run, a uh, bunch of stuff well through the 70s into the 80s. A small role in Necromaniac's favorite, Vice Squad. Uh, you know, but perhaps one of the most interesting things is her musical career. Uh, she is on Joan Jett's uh, smash hit Bad Reputation yeah, I didn't doing background vocals credited as kind of Rainbow Smith on sick, that song. Sick. And also, interestingly enough, uh, another Necromaniac's favorite film, Cruising. She is on the soundtrack. Uh, yeah, the song, When I Close My Eyes, yeah. I See Blood yeah, I by see Madeline Blood. Von Ritz. That is her on drums. Uh, sadly, Miss Smith passed uh, away at age 47 
on October 25th, 2002. Uh, man, I bet she has some stories, huh? Yeah, I didn't know that she was in the Runaways, man. That's kind of yes. Sick. She's sick. also in the Runaways for a spell, uh huh. Uh, towards the end of the Runaways, how about that? Uh, that's how she hooked up with Joan Jett. Interesting, huh? Yeah, I mean it's synergy that she uh, passed at hmm. a young age. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, another small role in Cheech and Chong's Nice Dreams. I mean, cool career, you know. Uh, and like I said, yeah, she does a great job in this movie. She's only about 18 and it's one of her earliest roles at the time. Um, if you, of course, have not listened to our Vice Squad and Cruising episodes, listeners, you are missing out. Go back, find those episodes and give them a listen. See, Mike, that's called uh, synergy. I just did synergy. You know, a little cross connect. Interesting. Yes, yes. Um, now, I guess it, it's important that we talk about like the overall, you know, plot and crux of the movie. Like I said, it is set during the Prohibition era. Um, she gets a letter, Lila, uh, to visit her injured father, who is a gangster, before he dies. Um, she's currently staying with the Reverend, who's definitely a little creepy and, you know, this church setting uh the reverend has kind of raised her um and she's well known uh in the church as this excellent singer and of course she's very pretty so she kind of stands out and yeah. gets a lot it's of like, attention no matter where she is uh, but she runs away uh to find sketchy. her dad you know, so that, to speak that's pretty much in this like strange the town lie, as of astaroth finds herself uh and thus uh, the yeah. fun ensues and, and you know i, I would like mike say said, that Every man she meets the along the way is, to Astaroth is, is, with her, is a really. creep right, right from the, from the, the, the see, bus station a, ticket salesman to the bus driver like to, to the people her, in the street. You know? There's that scene where the guy's beating his wife or girlfriend and he stops beating on his wife and girlfriend to hit on her, basically. Yeah. It's like no matter where she is, dudes are just being sketchy. You know, that that's pretty much like the, the vibe of the world that Lila finds herself in. You know, but you know what though? I, yeah, I would say that. About it. I would hmm. say that the Reverend is is yeah, that's probably it. Her, really, yeah, definitely. Right, right from the beginning, yeah, like, see, he wants it. Yeah, he kiss, I, I he's looking that, uh, at her like he wants to devour point, her. That you know? analysis. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad, as they say. Um, but you know what though? Uh, while I was momentarily, you know, a moment ago, questioning the the motive of the film by Mister Blackburn, I'm I'm kind of seeing that. This was his motive. Maybe he was he wanted to show how shitty society treats a young pretty girl. Do you think that's what he's trying to show? Yeah, that's like, probably it. Yeah, definitely. I mean it was like yeah. I, I think that uh that's that's on point, that analysis. Yeah. yeah. And look, yeah, well, is it I mean, a bit think exploitative? About well sure, is, it's really, you know nineteen seventy three and it's an independent film. Know. Uh, 9.9 .9 films out of 10 yeah, were exploitative uh, at yeah. this time period. But I and, think uh, the overall motive yeah, might not I mean, have been it's, so it's, uh, sinister. It, I it's think he wanted to paint exploitative, but a picture the of what the Prohibition era might you know, have been like for a young pretty wild, girl. Wild and on top of it, inject the, a world of vampires and horror yeah. and, you know, weirdness. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about what a vampire is, really, it's like sucking the life life blood out of a person, you know, predatory, yeah. you know, overall predatory, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it it's definitely exploitative, but this is the yeah, seventies, and, and that movie wild goes <laughs> hard, you know. You know, people <laughs> yes, were wild, I mean, they were look, wilding out in the seventies. They were wilding out, even mainstream movies. Taxi Driver, that was yeah. a mainstream film. That's pretty fucked up, uh, you know. Uh, Cruising is nineteen eighty, but that was a major studio film. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just kind of how things were, you know. And I think it was like that into the very early eighties, and then up to a certain point, it kind of stopped being like that like vice squad is an example of kind of like the end of that era in a way right yeah and and that movie goes hard you know oh yeah i mean this era goes out with a bang let's just say you know it doesn't really go out softly but it, it does kind of stop like the, these really kind of hard-edged you know dark fucked up movies 
definitely only get made up until a certain time. But they they began, I would say, late, late 60s through the 70s up until maybe about 84 or so, 83, 84. And then I think, you know, honestly, a lot of movies in general start to, to suck, in my opinion. But, you know, uh, a, a lot of gems can be found in that time period. And of course, once again, it, it brings it back to this, you know, Outside well, of the yeah. major studios, I mean, American this is, Nightmare. This is the first uh, uh, genre I've never seen this of, of all the people making independent about, films and across America. In and I just time. assumed that once um, I saw the young Let's talk a little more about Lamora herself. Uh, you know, you know the, the vampire know, who gets wrong, the title. Although it's it's funny how they went with that as the title, um, because while Lamora is is a, a, a main character, it's. I almost feel like it's Lila's movie, right? Though I mean, it's it's really her film. Well, yeah. I mean, this is the this is the first. Uh, I'd never seen this film before. We talked about mm, it, right. you know, and mm-hmm. I was aware of it. And I just assumed that once I saw the young girl on the screen, that she was going to be Lamora. But you know, yes, I, mm-hmm. I was wrong, wrong about about that. Right. She is Lila. Lamora is the seductive um, uh vampire i, mean, so I to like speak, that uh, who this, this is owns like the house that. and has kind of summoned they, well they Lyla, definitely did not need which him. in, well, in itself is kind of interesting i mean like a subconscious i guess it was kind of you know there, like predestined for, to, for, for lila to find lamora or vice but versa right the reality uh, tying in like the, 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 the mafia father the, uh, and uh, i don't know that was the one kind of thing I don't know Lamora if I was too was into like that kind of her. plot line, you know, the gangster world, they needed uh, thing. What, what did you think of that? To bring her, forth, um, you know, I mean, I like that. This, this is what I liked about the dad. They well, they definitely did not need him. Well, they needed a motivation, like a subconscious hmm. thing for her to come out there, like a reason for her to to look for some something. But right. the reality is that. Out there in the uh, the nether world, Lamora was like so. Yeah, she's her. like this kind of but grim in the material is, world. Like fairy they tale, this element, you know, like her father, kind of vibe to, to her. bring her forth. You know. Yeah, I get it, and again, it adds to that kind of dark fairy tale vibe because when uh, she gets to Lamora, and one of the first people she meets is Solange, who is this witch who lives with Lamora, who is straight out of like a disney film you know in some way like a disney witch like a like a old school kind of cartoony witch only it's it's not a cartoon it's a real person right yeah she's like this kind of grim's like yeah. fairy tale you know kind of vibe to her yeah yeah i, th- I thought that was an interesting scene where she's like singing to her and it was just really kind of creepy and telling her that one day she'll look like her and she's pretty now but she won't always be and this and that and it was like whoa you know um again adding to that kind of fairy tale vibe um and you know they, they kind of first they, they don't yeah. bring her to the house right, right. away they yeah, kind of definitely. like imprison I mean, her in this um, kind of like cottage outside the, you just the house this right feeling yeah. of being in danger, um like at every which turn i thought film. was kind of interesting you know i i, I guess it was kind of like to either scare her or kind of test her out or, or or whatnot before she goes into the house and sees what the hell's going on in there uh but of course when she does get to the house she finds all these kind of children that are inside the house who are very pale and sickly and again creep vibes w- yeah. would you agree oh yeah yeah definitely i mean it's um you you just get this feeling of being in danger like at every turn in this film hmm uh, agree. Um, now it, it's not, it, it doesn't kind of go into like <laughs> a typical vampire yeah. film at this point. I would say, look, she does yeah. of course figure out what a surprise that Lamora is drinking the blood of these children. And, and she witnesses a few things that she shouldn't have witnessed. And that, you know, Solange isn't this great person. I'm not Solange. Uh, Lamora isn't this great woman that's come to save her. Uh, the uh the, the scene where she has Lila uh, bathe in front of her, which you know yes, very, <laughs> very uncomfortable. uncomfortable Possibly yeah. more uncomfortable than any of the scenes with the men. How about that? Yeah. Um 
because you, you kind of thought that Lamar was going to take her away from all like the, the sketch dudes and maybe not be like that. But no, unfortunately, Gaspard she knows herself she is, uh, you know, movie. fucked up. Um, now, <laughs> that would it's be interesting. Like, like, I, I wonder like, what else they kind of wanted to there. show there. I mean, again, you know, it, it's the 70s and, and the actress was of legal age at the time. But if, if you're portraying a 14 year old, I mean, they didn't really show really anything in that scene. But all the implied stuff and just the kind of camera angles and the touching of her shoulder was was enough right gaspar no should remake this movie oh my god forget <laughs> that it that um, would be like one of the most like fucked up movies ever i think yeah i mean like any honestly these, like, american nightmare films this, like you this saying, a lot of these movies from of those, the american like, nightmare French a lot of these classic people, 70s movies i think would you know, fare Claire very Dini well with Gaspar no or, you know serious you know, remakes Pas- Pascal, you know what i'm saying Logier that don't do a lot to the plot them, you know um uh, i'm not necessarily saying shot for shot remakes but like taking the meat of it you know and uh, you know exposing it to the modern world because Look, there's a lot of people that will never find this movie, Mike. Would you would you agree? Yeah. I mean, any of these like American nightmare films, like you were saying, I would love to see some of those like French extremity <laughs> people, some of those filmmakers, you know, like Claire Denis or Gaspar. Uh, no, I think or, uh, Eli Roth, you know, guy, <laughs> yes. Pascal cool Logier, as hell. or one like, of those I would people, love yep. to be, you know, hang out yeah. with him. I just don't really like his movies. Totally. Or or even, you know, an an, an upstart American who's who's done their homework and loves this kind of shit. I mean, uh, Look, um, I know you're not the biggest Eli Roth guy, but I imagine Eli Roth is aware of all these movies and is a fan of all these movies. Uh, he's he's finally got Thanksgiving coming out. The, uh, the the first trailer for that went out, and uh, uh, I am excited for that. It's a bit of an aside. I think Eli Roth, the guy, is probably cool as hell. Like I would love to, mm-hmm. you know, hang out with him. I just don't really like his movies. Mm. Um, but someone like him, um, if of course, if not him, not not for you at least. Yeah, Bob Zombie, uh, I think, well. would handle something like this really well. I don't know. I think Hell, even a even a Rob a Zombie bit, again, you know, who is probably well versed in a lot of these uh, movies, if not all of them, may have an interesting uh, take American on them. But I think know. I think his remake days are. I don't know if he yeah, wants like to do more remakes. Else you know. Scripted the film. Um, and he but just it would be interesting. It. I mean, this, I you know, cool. people who, who like have to love 70s like cinema, uh, obscure 70s horror sound, cinema, uh, would be the only people to touch these movies for me, you know? Yeah, Bob Zombie's got to, um, I don't know, I think he's he got to tame his ego that. a little bit and mm. get out of yeah. the, uh, yeah. you know, kind of low-life uh, American experience, <laughs> you know? And maybe just direct and not write. Yes, yeah, there's that. Like if, if someone else scripted the film and he just directed it, I think that might be cool. Because I do like the way his films like look. And his yeah. directing is really solid, I think. Mm. Yeah, and they but don't it, really I think him, him having to write on, everything might be a control issue. You kind of get the, um, you know what I'm saying? the impression right. that you can uh, it's, like Look, a lot of writers are like, a lot of directors, I feel like, are like person. that. You know? Yeah. Well, not all you turn into one of these brutal um, vampires it's their script and their movie and yada yada i bet there's a lot of that going on but uh yeah that was to the side um we find out that uh, uh lila's dad is in fact at the house but he's one of the more fucked up uh you know yeah, exactly savage vampires right yeah and they don't like, really uh, explain you, know, you and i was on the... but you kind of get brutal the brutal ones um, and Jeff the impression that the, the, if you're kind of you know, like the, a the more together vampire you know? character person, mm-hmm. you, you turn into one of these brutal vampires. <laughs> yes. yes. And if you're a bit yeah. more uh, uh, of the aristotic uh, class, aristocratic, uh, you know, uh, if I'm mispronouncing that, of course, uh, you get to look like the more sleeker vampire, the more traditional vampire, right? Yeah, exactly. Of the aristocracy, perhaps, yes. Like, uh, because, you, know, you and I would be the, the the more brutal ones, and Jeff would probably be the, you know, the, the more together <laughs> vampires. You know? Yes, yes. That fancy schmancy boy, Jeff. Yes, you're right. I think you're right, Mike. That's a good take. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was very funny. Hello, Jeff. All my love, Jeff. All my love. Um, 
Now, the movie kind of culminates in like this battle royale, so to speak, between the the more traditional vampires and and the, the you know the sketchy, wolfy, beastie vampires uh, that goes on in the town, right? Um, you know, it leaves a, a lot of them kind of dead. Uh, and poor Lila has to kill her own father, who has become, like we said, one of the more fucked up vampires. Maybe not fully explained, but it is what it is. Um, you know, she's crying over her dad's corpse, and uh, Lamora, you know, appears uh, to offer her some comfort. But of course, what Lamora does is turn our uh, hero, so to speak, uh, into a vampire. Uh, the Reverend has made it very his way least, the Reverend uh, into Astaroth. You know, he's yeah. lo he's looking for his gal. He's looking for Lila, right? Um, and uh, he, he finds her. And we get a very uncomfortable scene yet again where she starts kissing him. Now, again, before this, we don't know what they've kind of done. Like, I mean, look, I guess you've kind of figured out that the Reverend might have been molesting her on the side, right? I mean, it's kind of pretty much implied. You know, but there's, there's, you know, we didn't see any of that really. At um, the very least, the Reverend is obsessed with her. You know? He's obsessed with her, right? Exactly. Or maybe he hasn't really done anything with her, or has always wanted to. Who the fuck knows? Whatever it is, it's pretty in indecent. Um, and sure enough, she, you know, digs her fangs into his throat and drains his blood. Uh, while the camera pans up over a yeah, smiling Lamora, who is, of, that, of course, too. thrilled that her Lila is now yeah. one of her and, you know, goes on with the killing. Um, and, and the movie kind of closes with Lila singing in the church uh, congregation, which I kind of took as a flashback ending. Uh, I don't think that was I don't think that was, I, you know, I think she's now a vampire and she's, you know staying with Lamora. I thought that that ending was just kind of this cool flashback to when she was an innocent child. What did you think? Yeah, I agree. Cause didn't she have a cross around her neck too at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, it, again, it's one of those kind of interesting seven yeah, endings I think that, where, um, it, you know, it yeah, kind of freezes on a frame and, and there's creepy music and, and the credits come up. One of the best things about the 70s, of I mean, course, was the really ending of the movies. The, you know, um, God being dead. But yeah, I mean, look, a lot to unpack in some ways uh, when it comes to, I think, perhaps child abuse or maybe the church or, you know, the, the, the role of, of, of men, you know, uh, leching over very young women. Right. This is kind of a lot of that going on. Right. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, it's more about child abuse and that kind of thing than anti-religion, really. I mean, because they don't really yeah. talk about the, you know, God being dead or any of that kind of stuff, you know. Now, of course, when it came out, it was panned. Leonard Malton, that son of a bitch, gave it one of his lowest ratings, called it a bomb. Awful low budgeter. Elvis Mitchell from The New York Times uh, wasn't really a fan. Uh, Lamore wants to surpass the expansions on vampire film mythology uh, that propelled the fecund, tightly wound horror movies from Hammer. The film falls short of its goals, but it is a classic of sorts. Uh, then you flash forward into the modern day where it's looked upon favorably or a bit mixed. Uh, Barry Meyer of Film Monthly called it a real creeper. What makes this film work so well is that writer-director Richard Blackburn understands how to shock people without exploiting the gimmick gimmickry of the genre like so many other films of that era were willing to do. Um, some have called it a cross between Bava and Bunnell. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Maitland McDonough who wrote a great book about Dario Argento, by the way, called Broken Mirrors, Broken Minds. Yeah, definitely uh, not that for book everyone, out. but I called tell you it what. an art house vampire film me. with lesbian yeah. undertones. Richard Blackburn's debut film puts an ambitious and surprisingly effective spin on traditional vampire movie cliches. Um, yeah. Is this movie for everybody? No. Will all of our listeners love it? No. Uh, but I think the listeners who have enjoyed 
our uh, run of American Nightmare films will definitely enjoy this film. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, definitely not for everyone, but I can tell you what, it's definitely for me, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. I enjoyed it. Uh, glad I finally saw it. Um, you know, sad ending to uh, actress Cheryl Smith's life, unfortunately. I'd love to kind of dig in to see if there's any I'm in line you with know, you interview again, footage Mike. of her or a little more floor. about this film. The, the DVD is fairly bare bones, doesn't come with too much, honestly. Uh, because it's from 2004, uh, and she had already passed back in 2002. But I would definitely like to know a little more about it and a little more about her career. Uh, she's in some some great exploitation movies, many of which I've always actually wanted to see, and, and now I'll definitely check out. Uh, out of our Necromaniac score of one to five, I give this a very solid four. I'm in line with you once again, Mike. I give it a four. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely a good movie. Good I'll 70s horror film. I'll definitely recommend it, man. Uh, nah, good fall movie, honest, you though. know. Brandon, uh, definitely uh, a lot of these uh, movies are definitely instrumental in cool to kind of watch, I think, so a, a, as the weather uh, transfers from the heat into the cooler climate. Um, yeah, I mean, looking forward to checking out more kind of 70s, 80s gems that I've missed. Uh, however, I did check out last week's episode, Mike, uh, where yeah. you and Jeff talked about a new film, Influencer, and now I want to watch that. I'll definitely recommend it, man. I mean, uh, I got to be honest, uh, Brandon definitely was uh, instrumentally instrumental in me mm -hmm. it you out. Know, I've been going was, back uh, telling me it was worthwhile. That. I've been numb. Very cool. I, I just recently. Um, yeah, and I think there was with, something uh, else that Hannibal. I saw that looked kind of interesting that I, I wanted to check out on Shutter, but I think uh, uh, as far as it might you, go to the the, the top um, of the pile, I can't think of anything. Off um, of my head, I had know? a question uh, for you: Is there anything, you know, there, there's uh, series that wise I that I should be watching good. that I have not been watching I because watch I I feel like I am very behind series wise for horror, sci-fi, etc. Series, you know. I've been going back with that. Mm. I've been numb. Mm -hmm. I, w I just recently went back with uh, with Hannibal. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I should do that too. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as new, um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. You know, um, you know, there, there's uh, stuff that I hear of that's good that I might want to check out, but uh, right, nothing that I've currently been watching. Yeah, same here. Uh, listeners, if you think there's something interesting on any of the streamers, uh, series-wise, not movie-wise, that we should check out, uh, shoot us a message. Uh, always interested in hearing recommendations. Uh, as you can see, we've been on a bit of a, a 70s tear here at the Necro uh, camp. Um, but, of course, we've got some newer shit that we're going to talk about. Uh, one thing I've noticed, though, I feel like the latter half of the year film wise has a lot of what I would call adult fare. And I don't mean triple X. Um, <laughs> it kind of okay. has started with Oppenheimer, which is literally turning into one of the biggest R rated films ever, apparently like money wise. Uh, I have not seen Oppenheimer yet, but I really want to see it. But uh, coming down the pike, as far as again, serious adult films, we have uh, Killers of the Flower Moon from Scorsese, which is coming this year in October. We have uh, so, The man. Killer I, um, with uh, Fassbender in it, which comics, looks really cool. I do not. Um, then there is a Ferrari coming out uh, with uh, Adam Driver, which okay. also looks really cool. Uh, these are all dramas. These are all adult dramas. Uh, and then a little later, there's the Napoleon film. So, again, none of these are comic movies. None of these are remakes. Um, do you think we may actually have something for people our age to see in the theater? I certainly hope so, man. I, um, as much as I love comics, I do mm -hmm. not. I've fallen out of love with comic book uh, movies. Yes. Uh, punched out a while ago. Uh, I did see Flash, and I enjoy it because I'm, I'm a DC mark. Uh, but DC does not churn out the, the crap that Marvel turns out movie-wise and in the, the numbers that Marvel does. I, I think my last Marvel movie was that last Avengers movie, which I enjoyed. And I actually felt 
personally was a good cap on things for Marvel and me, you know? Uh, I thought it was a good ending place. Now everyone tells me how great Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is. I have not seen part two. I did enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy part one, so maybe I will see Guardians 2 yeah, and 3. I, I, uh, have I enjoyed to. that I mean, Guardians Oppenheim Christmas special it. last year, no, which was fun. I got, I got but that's not a Marvel a movie. Nice uh, I am for that, you know? largely over superhero movies. Um, am I looking forward to when Superman, you know, when DC kind of does their do-over and gets that going? Yes, because I'm a DC person. But largely, I I just That's I awesome, just don't really though. care I'm anymore. Happy, you know. With some brains, uh, I am interested in seeing well. all the movies I just mentioned. Though. Yeah, I I have to. I mean, Oppenheimer. That's like a three hour movie, man. I gotta, yeah, I gotta yeah. cut out like a nice chunk of my day for that. You know. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's the, the 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 box office for it has been astounding. You know, like. It, it almost over eight hundred million dollars worldwide, or something like that. Like Don't, Jesus, uh, you know? forget. That's awesome. There's bro. also glad, the happy Exorcist something with some brain drop too. It's like <laughs> doing well. Yeah, it's it's one of the biggest movies of the year. I mean, I didn't think that was gonna fucking happen, you know. And and hell, okay, yeah, worldwide, U.S., you know, and outside U.S., eight hundred and fifty-four million. Never thought that was gonna happen. Uh, look, and you're also talking to somebody who thought Barbie would make, you know, two hundred million dollars. And boy, was I wrong about that. So yeah. Don't uh forget there's also the Exorcist is getting ready to drop too. <laughs> yes. Well, look, I am actually very much looking forward to that. I was watching this weird exorcist promo thing they had on the yeah, Roku I mean, channel. Jeff, uh, it was like big. about the, the early Exorcist and I mean, Linda he, Blair he and I, I'm kind of yeah. into all things uh, Exorcist so yes, direct I, I will see that and we are going to have our, our you know uh, three way episode for that puppy uh, a little later this year yeah, so I'm looking yeah, forward to that. I don't know. Um, I'd like to see him do Didn't a, get around cool, to seeing the like, Meg 2 or like uh, although I enjoyed the original Meg uh, I don't know it kind of takes a lot for me to go to the movie theater, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, Jeff uh, caught the Meg. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he yeah, likes he said movies, it wasn't yeah. that right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ben Wheatley, yeah. direct day job. Yeah, you like, know? and you would have, yeah, like, you guys were saying last episode, you would have thought that there might have been a little bit of his stamp on it, but apparently there is none of his stamp on it. Yeah, you know, it's, I don't know. That's a bummer. I'd like to see him do a, a cool, like, full car. Oh, yeah, man. And we'll uh, talk to you guys yeah, next week. Yeah, but I guess, you know, this week, the, like. the bigger the studio, the bigger the franchise, the the less, like, the less of your little stamp you can put on it. I guess you got to do with the powers that be, you know, yeah. and the people putting the money in your pocket want you to do, such yeah. as life. It's his day job, you know. Exactly, exactly. Now he can do something wild and crazy again. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So that's that's the state of things here at the Necro Camp listeners. We hope you uh, enjoyed this episode. Hell yeah, man. And we'll uh, talk to you guys next week. And I'll see you this weekend, Mike. Yes. Hell yes. Take care, everybody.
Are you, um, have you seen Night Tide? Jesus Christ, man. What the fuck is wrong with me tonight? 